Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create 3D blood splatter using RealFlow and Maya. So let's get started. Alright so here we are in RealFlow and I'm using version 10 but you should be able to follow along in previous versions as well. And um, I also did a quick render of a just a close up of the blood splatter here in Maya. Uh, so we're going to take it into Maya and then render it right at the end. So I'm going to close this and um, then we're going to go back to RealFlow. And uh, you can see we've got this custom shape here, almost looks like a bottle that I created just to compress the blood splatter out of the front. So I'm going to quickly show you guys how I created this in Maya. You can obviously use any 3D application to do this in. Um, I prefer Maya, so I'm going to go File, New Scene, and I don't want to save that. And uh, then I'm going to make sure that I'm on the Modeling uh, tab or the Modeling window. And I'm going to go to Poly Modeling and then create a simple cylinder. All right, I'm going to move it up and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So if we have our cylinder selected, um, you can just rotate it here. Let's just type in 90 like that. And then under your poly cylinder, I'm going to make it slightly higher. So it's a bit longer. And uh, then I'm also going to give it some uh, subdivisions in the height. So about four, even three should be fine. And uh, then I'm going to right click on this object, go to face mode and let's just zoom in here. And I'm going to remove all the faces here at the front. So I'm not sure how to do this in an easy way. So I usually just um, kind of select them like that. Let me just zoom in here some more. And uh, let me just select them all. And then I'm going to delete them. So pressing delete on the keyboard. And uh, then I'm going to do the same with this side don't really have to do this side but I'm gonna do it anyways and then delete all right so we're ending up with this pipe structure and uh, this is what we're going to be used to force the blood out the front so I'm going to select all these front faces and I'm going to press R on the keyboard and I'm going to scale them down so that we have something like that all right and that's basically the shape that we need Okay, I'm going to go out of uh, face mode, so I'm going to right click, go to object mode. And uh, then, very importantly for RealFlow, any objects that you export from a 3D application to RealFlow, it needs to be created with triangles or it needs to be triangulated. So with this mesh selected, I'm going to go to mesh here at the top and I'm going to click on triangulate and it's going to create triangles from that mesh. Okay, now I'm going to export this object, so I'm going to select it and uh, then I'm going to go to file and uh, then export selection. And I want to export it as an OBJ, so I'm going to select OBJ. And uh, then I'm going to quickly browse to the folder. And I'm going to give it a name. Uh, let's just call it Object for now. And then Export Selection. Alright, now I'm going to go into RealFlow and we're going to start a new scene. So I'm going to go File, New Project. And uh, yes, that's all fine. And I'm going to go to New. And uh, let's just call this Blood Splat. Alright, Create New Project. Alright, so first of all, we're going to start with a kill volume to make sure that all our particles is contained in this container. Everything outside it will be deleted. So that will just make uh, your simulation faster and it's just safer to kind of start with something like that. Alright, so that's our kill uh, volume. And uh, next we're going to create some gravity. So I'm going to create a gravity demon and just move it to the side. And for now I'm going to disable or make this inactive. So with the gravity selected here in the side panel, make sure the simulation is set to inactive. We will um, activate it later on in the simulation. And then we're going to import the object we created from Maya. So go to import and then object. And uh, then I'm going to browse to that folder. And I'm going to select my OBJ. There you can see that's the bottle like object. And I'm going to click on open and it's going to bring it in. And um, now I'm going to scale it down. So pressing R on the keyboard scaling it down and I'm just going to move it into position. I'm going to move it to the edge of this uh, kill volume. Something like that. Maybe make it slightly bigger. And uh, then I'm going to increase the size of this kill volume. So I'm going to select it and pressing R on the keyboard. I'm going to make it longer like that. And uh, then we can move our bottle object to the side. Okay, we can probably scale it up slightly more. Cool, now I'm also going to create a wall on the side just to see if the blood will actually splatter against the wall. You can obviously, you don't have to do it, you can just do it without any object and then you can use that in a scene in your 3D application. But for this tutorial I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to scale it up just to create a wall-like structure. And I'm just going to show the geometry. 
make it shaded, move it to the side, and maybe let's scale it up some more. Okay, so that's our wall. And uh, next we need to create some particles. So I'm just gonna do standard particles for this tutorial. Just click on sphere, and I'm gonna move this into place. I'm gonna put this inside the end or the back of this bottle. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna select the bottle and I'm gonna click on the shaded view so we can see it. And uh, then let's just zoom in here. And uh, then I'm gonna position my particle emitter inside it. And I'm gonna scale it down because obviously now it's sticking out the sides. I'm just gonna scale it down. Something like that should actually be fine. Okay, centered like that. And uh, now with your particle emitter selected here in the side properties, I am just gonna change some parameters here. So I'm gonna change the resolution to five. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna set the speed to 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in here. And uh, now I'm gonna start the simulation. But before we do that, let's just change our frames or frames amount or duration at the bottom. I'm gonna make this uh, about 100. Should actually be fine. Okay, and now I'm gonna start the simulation. And I'm just gonna stop it. Um, I just want a bit of particles here in the center. So I think that's actually fine up to about 25. It all depends on the size and the speed of your emitter. Okay, also something we need to change is on our emitter, I wanna set the speed to zero because I don't want to emit any more particles. So I'm gonna set this to zero. And uh, now I wanna set that as initial state. So with that emitter selected, I'm gonna scroll all the way up and then I'm gonna click on use initial state. I'm gonna set that to yes. And uh, below that, I'm gonna click on make initial state. All right, then here at the bottom, you click on this drop down next to reset and you set this to reset to initial state. Just enable that. And now every time you click on reset and yes, it will reset back to that state. Okay, that's basically what we want. Okay, so next we want to create an object that's gonna force the blood out of this little front section. So for that, I'm gonna go to geometry and click on cube again. And I'm just gonna move it up and move it closer this way. And then we're just gonna scale it up. So we have something like that. That's good enough. And I'm gonna enable shaded view for it. Okay, I'm gonna move it to the back of this bottle shape. So I just move it somewhere. So it's kind of overlapping already. So you don't have any particles that's gonna spill out there. Just something like that. Okay, we can move it up slightly. And um, now I'm gonna animate or add some keyframes to the position of this box. So it's gonna start right about there. And then with this object selected, I'm gonna click on the little circle next to position. And then I'm gonna to go to frame number 10 and I'm gonna move it all the way to the front about kind of somewhere here where it's starting to slope down. And then I'm gonna click on that circle again to set a new keyframe. So now if I scrub here, you'll see we've got that animation saved on the cube. All right, one more thing I wanna create is a sphere and I'll explain to you guys now what this is for. So I'm gonna place this here at the front of the opening of this object um, and this is just going to create some random splatter um, for the blood so i'm going to enable shaded view on it and maybe something like that should be fine you can always fine tune it and move it around and try different stuff so you just want a bit of an opening here at the top of the sphere and um, next we want to enable our gravity again so i'm going to select the gravity on the side panel and then right at the top where it says simulation i'm going to set this to active and uh, now we're ready to start our simulation and see how it actually works. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the first frame, click on reset, uh, yes, and then I'm gonna click on simulate. Okay, our simulation is done, so let's play through that quickly and see. And there you can see we've got the splatter and it's also hitting the wall and it's looking pretty nice. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that and now let's uh, create a mesh from this simulation. So I'm going to highlight the sphere emitter and then I'm going to go to mesh at the top and I'm going to click on particle mesh and it's going to create a mesh for that. And uh, then with that selected, make sure in the first frame or frame zero, and then I'm going to click on this build mesh sequence. Okay, let's click on that. And then it's just going to render that um, mesh to files. All right, so now if you go to your RealFlow folder under Scenes, under the uh, project that you created, and then under Meshes, you will see all the ABC files, and this is per frame. And now we want to stitch this together so that we can import it into Maya. So in RealFlow, I'm going to go to Tools, and uh, then I'm going to click on Stitch Alembic Files, and then I'm just going to clear that. There was a previous test I did. 
and I'm going to click on add files and then we want to add all those mesh files. So I'm going to go to the meshes uh, folder and then click on the first ABC file, go down to the bottom holding shift and click on the last one, click on open, it's going to import all those ones and then you want to give it an output file where it's going to save it to. So I'm just going to save it to my folder and uh, then we're going to give it a name, let's call this blood splat. Okay, now I'm going to click on save and click stitch. And it's going to give you a little indicator at the bottom that it's done. So just give it a few seconds. So you can see stitching and then it says done. Okay, now I'm going to jump into Maya. Let's just create a new scene. And then I'm going to go to file import. And I'm going to select my new ABC file that I exported or that I stitched. Click on import. And now if we play this back, you'll see there is our 3D blood splatter. Okay, let's just add a quick uh, material to it. So I'm going to go to the hypershade and then under Arnold, I'm going to go to shader and then uh, surface, AI standard surface. And there's some presets here that you can try. There's a blood preset. I'm just going to click on that, see how that works. Maybe just make it slightly darker. Okay, and then we're going to drag this middle mouse click and uh, drag that onto the blood. And uh, let's add a quick light. So under Arnold, and create a light and uh, let's just make it a bit bigger and I'm gonna move it up and I'm just gonna place it kind of here to the side of this splatter maybe the back and I'm gonna increase the exposure okay let's do a quick render I'm just gonna enable 3d manipulation here so we can zoom in here and let's just increase the exposure of that light okay and there you can see we have some nice blood splatter in 3D uh, that you can use or just render out different angles and then you can maybe use that to comp it inside of After Effects. And yeah, that's how you create um, some real 3D blood splatter. And that's how easy it is to create 3D blood splatter using RealFlow and Maya. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Click on that thumbs up if you did. And also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new tutorials. I upload new visual effects and motion graphics tutorials on a weekly basis. So click on subscribe and you'll be notified. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers, bye.